place, Angel Grace Fox Sports Ohio. Coach, when you uh, welcome in the third highest scoring duo of the league, what's your main approach defensively for just slowing or containing them? Uh, just make it as difficult as you can. Um, you know, those two are you know, two of our elite of the elite in our league. Um, you know, shutting those guys down uh, would take a lot, but we want to make it as difficult on them as we possibly can. Uh, make every catch a difficult catch, you know, get them off their sweet spots, um, show them crowds, you know, but, you know, expect them to make some tough shots and not let that demoralize us, you know, contest them all. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, try to keep them off the free throw line and make every bucket, you know, have to be a hard earned uh, field goal and not an easy one from the line. And as your team continues to build on consistency, what step do you want to see? see um, taken tonight, uh, just overall, but just the biggest step that you want to see taken tonight? Uh, just that level of competition. You know, when, whenever you face one of the best teams in the league um, with, you know, some of the highest level talent in our league, uh, you know, you want to see, you know, are you willing to take that challenge? Uh, and that's what's most important for us is I want to see our guys go out there and lay it on the line uh, and see what happens. And the last one for me, Coach, with it being National Girl of Women in Sports Day, I know that you're a dad of um, two girls that are athletes, but also have um, Lindsay Gottlieb on your staff. Your thoughts on her and what she brings to your staff? Uh, Lindsay's awesome. Um, you know, she brings on top of, you know, intelligence and basketball intelligence uh, and being a great person, uh, she brings a calm to the staff as well. Um, you know, sometimes, I don't know if you've noticed, I can get a little excited. Um, and she does a great job of, you know, bringing me back uh, and the same thing with the guys, um, but giving you, you know, someone who's trustworthy, uh, someone who you know you can depend on uh, when times are good or when times are bad. Um, but, you know, she's awesome. I couldn't say enough positive things about Lindsay. All right, we've got a very special media member with us tonight, and he'll be up next. Zakari, our Cavaliers junior reporter. Zakari, go ahead. Hi, Coach. I'm Zakari Austin, and I'm a Cavs Kids Club Junior Reporter. Hey, Zakari. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Today is National Girls and Women's in Sports Day. What message do you want to share with female athletes and women working in sports? Uh, go for it and do whatever it takes to accomplish your goals. Um, you know, put in the work. There's a lot of opportunities out there. Uh, the face of women's sport is changing. Um, you know, with professional leagues and basketball and soccer, you know, and all those other sports, there's a large opportunity uh, to accomplish your dream. So whatever it takes, you know, whatever work you have to put in, um, don't let anybody tell you you can't uh, and go out and go, go accomplish your dreams. And I have one more question for you. Okay. As a coach, what do you do? What do you say to your players? Um, so that they play hard, but still have fun playing the game? Uh, I think you embrace the competition. You know, you embrace the opponent in front of you uh, and going and giving them your best effort. And if you go out and give your best effort, uh, at the end of the day, you can be proud of yourself because you know you put your best foot forward. Um, and it's fun. Competing is fun. It's why we do what we do. Uh, but the most important thing is competing with your teammates is even more fun. Uh, so that's what our goal is, is to try to get everybody involved and everybody competing at a high level so they can have fun. Thank you for your time, Coach. Thank you. You did a great job, my man. Thank you. Thanks, Zakari. Great stuff. We'll go to Fedor next. Sure. Make me follow Zakari. That's great. Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. Hey, JB. Hey, what's up, Chris? Um, when you have um, an opponent like the Clippers that have like multiple guys that you could put Isaac Okoro on to defend, I know you've run into this with Brooklyn and Minnesota recently. What goes into the process of determining which guy Isaac is going to get? Uh, you know, a combination of who else we have on the floor um, and where their strengths may lie. And then we kind of use Isaac as a guy that just fills whatever gap, you know, we see fit uh, based on the other matchups on the floor where we can put guys in positions of strength. Thank you. Kelsey. 
Um, Kelsey Russo, The Athletic. Hi, JV. Hey, Kels. Um, First thing, is Drummond available tonight? He is available, yes. Okay. And then kind of on a broader scale, um, you guys have passed technically the quarter mark of the season for you guys so far. And we've talked so much about the continued growth and the things in, the, in this process. But when you evaluate this first quarter of the season, um, what I guess is the biggest step that you've seen and what is the next step that you want to see from your guys? Um, you know, I, I think it's the progress that we've made from where we began. Um, you know, and again, considering this, you know, where we were last year to finish the season and then these, you know, first few games, um, you know, we believe we're a better team now than we were then. Um, you know, I think for us to be able to already have uh, our 10th win um, compared to this time last year, I think is a step in the right direction. And, you know, it's the consistency for the most part of our identity. You know, we've had a couple of nights where, you know, I didn't think we played to who we were, uh, but most nights we have. And the results may vary, but, you know, as long as we continue to play um, to our identity, I think we'll continue to get better. Lawrence Murray. Law Murray from The Athletic. Uh, first of all, Zakari did a great job. So I've been smiling the whole time, been geeking out over that. Uh, but uh, JB, I also wanted to ask you kind of a little bit off of Kelsey's question. This was a team last year that was bottom 10 and specifically forcing turnovers. And now you're like top two in that same category. And these guards are the same. Well, I think a lot of people kind of correlate uh, being before it's turnovers to, the, to uh, you know, veterans guard play. Um, I know you have the rookie Coral, but how have you kind of put a priority on taking the ball away from teams? Uh, you, you know, to be honest with you, uh, we prioritize putting guys in the right spots um, and shrinking the floor more and making teams play in traffic. You know, so I think that's where we end up with a ton of deflections and steals because we're trying to make guys play in crowded areas. Um, you know, we're not a gambling team. You know, we're not jumping through passing lanes um, and jeopardizing the integrity of our defense. We like to just shrink the floor as much as we can and put people uh, in a crowd and then get deflections. And then those deflections have led to turnovers. Marla. Marla right now, our Akron Beacon Journal. Um, I know this is only a small step, but, you know, Kevin resuming basketball activities, you finally seeing kind of light at the end of the tunnel with him? Uh, yeah, I mean, we watched him today. Um, we'll throw a workout, you know, and he was moving around, looks you know, good. He says he feels good. You know, obviously we're going to be intelligent about how we bring him back, but, um, you know, it's great to see him on the floor doing basketball uh, activities and not just in a training room. Thank you. You're welcome. Spencer. Spencer Davies, basketballnews.com. JB, obviously Kawhi and PG are the head of the snake there, but they've got like seven or eight guys that are shooting 40% from deep. So what do you tell your guys uh, in order to contest, but not only just contest, but smartly contest those shots to make sure that the ones that they make are at least going to be tough. Well, I mean, that's where, you know, obviously they, they get you is because, you know, Kawhi and Paul George, um, you know, are so capable in isolations and one-on-one -on -one that teams feel like, you know, you got to overcommit to slow them down. And then the other guys get wide open threes. Um, you know, so again, on a night where, you know, you got Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, you have to make a choice. You know, your choice becomes, you know, do we allow them to take difficult twos, hopefully contested and challenged, as opposed to running and helping and then giving, you know, like you said, those quality shooters wide open three. So, you know, I think we need to just stay closer to home on their shooters uh, and, you know, as best we possibly can, um, you know, defend with the man on the ball and the big at the rim. Tomer. Hey, Coach, Tomer is Arlen from Flush Points. Uh, I'm just curious, you guys, you have a couple of young guys on your team. When you have a game like this against a championship contender, a lot of, you know, top five guys in their team, do you guys see this as a stepping stone towards what you can become engaging where you are? And also, do you see your young guys sort of getting up to the challenge and, and 
having something extra when you go up against superstars like these? Uh, yeah, our guys like to take the challenge. And I think that's the, you know, best piece of our young guys, you know, is their willingness to accept these challenges. Um, you know, we know what we're facing tonight. You know, the Clippers are a heck of a team uh, with individual talent. You know, they fit well together. They're well coached. So we know we're going to have our hands full, but our guys don't back down. Um, you know, our guys, you know, are toes down, our chin down, toes forward, uh, you know, going after these guys because, you know, they want to be mentioned at one point in that same conversation. Uh, our guys are hungry to be great. And they know in order to be great, you got to compete at a high level against the best. So uh, we're looking forward to it. You know, our, our guys love the challenges. Um, and, uh, you know, we're looking forward to a big one tonight. Last one, Tim Alcorn. Tim Alcorn, Cavs Radio. Hey, JB. Hey, Tim. Um, as elite as they are, they're also on the final game of a six-game road swing. They're going back-to-back -back after last night uh, against Brooklyn. Um, not that you can choose your opponents when you want to see them, but it's, is this a time where, hey, if you're going to play the Clippers now, now's the night to play them? Uh, the time to play them was about a week and a half ago when all their guys were out. <laughs> Um, but no, they, uh, I mean, again, ha all that stuff being said, you know, them having lost the game last night, uh, kind of erases that, uh, in my mind of how they're going to approach this game. Um, you know, the good teams, the great teams, you know, pride themselves on never losing two games in a row. So we expect them to come out and give us their best shot tonight. When your opponent is on the second night of a back-to-back -back, does that affect your game plan at all? I know Monday night you talked about thrust and pushing pace. If you've got an opponent that's in their second game in 24 hours, how does that impact a game plan? Well, I mean, you definitely want to make them chase you. Um, you know, we're not going to go out and play reckless basketball, uh, but we want to try to take advantage of some early scoring opportunities uh, because they're a good half-court defensive team anyway. So we want to be able to push and play in front of their defense before they get a chance to get set. But, you know, early in the game, you want to test their legs a little bit uh, and see where they are. Thanks, JB. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Coach.